This is Twit. It's the. This is coming from the uh, It's Foss community. They posted about a new community-led initiative called EUOS. It is led by Robert. And I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing your uh, last name. I want to put the emphasis on the I. Ryman. He's a physicist and computer, sir, computer scientist by education, currently working in Brussels on data protection policy. Now, the EUOS is, as I'd mentioned earlier, proof of concept for the deployment of a Fedora-based Linux operating system with a, would you believe it, a KDE Plasma desktop environment in a typical, is there anything so, such as a typical public sector organization? But it is specifically created to address the unique requirements of the European Union's public sector organizations. This is not the first time a Linux-powered operating system has been proposed for the EU. Similar goals have been inspired in earlier projects like France's Genbuntu for law enforcement use and Munich's LIMAX or LIMAX for government extra administration. Now, despite the name, EUOS is technically not a new operating system. Uh, since it is going to be based on a Fedora, it's just going to be a, I would say, a spin at the moment that would give you the added value of EUOS is standardized gives you standardization. It would standardize on a common Linux OS as a base for all EU OS users with options to layer on top modifications. You could think maybe a national layer, to regional layer, sex sector specific layers, maybe even organizational uh, specific layers, similar to the way that Fedora and Ubuntu currently have spins like Kubuntu, Ubuntu Studio, the two examples we've had tonight. Uh, you'd also, as we were talking earlier, when we were talking about the uh, Plasma lock-in, a common desktop environment to make it easier for someone to move from one hardware system to another without having to relearn desktop behavior. Uh, Jonathan, have you uh, moved from KDE to GNOME and then back again? Do you find your muscle memory getting in the way? Not for a very long time. It has been a long time since I've actually done anything with uh, with GNOME. Uh, another area that it would help to standardize would be a common method to manage users and their data, software, hmm. and devices. Now, I, what do you think drives the EUOS? A government grant. I, uh, in a way, yeah, it's it, the concept of public money, public code. I think we've talked about that in the past, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Supposedly, this, though, isn't an official EU-driven project. But to I, me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I why, would, why wouldn't they start with, like, SUSE or even Ubuntu? Ubuntu is from the Isle of Man. Oh, it's Robert's not a got a website uh, it's a link to in the uh, show it, there's a link to it in the article i've got in the show notes that some of y'all can go and it's even got where people have come put in suggestions about that and discussed it but yeah you're yeah, right because like yeah cache os manjaro there's i mean there's a lot of german french distributions there's and why reinvent it? I mean, if you could just say, you know what, we're going to take SUSE or Ubuntu or Manjaro or whatever, you pick one and like, okay, this is going to be our standard and help develop that for the, rather no. than kind of recreate a bunch of stuff. It, to me, it just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense or well, else I'm not fully understanding what the goal is basic uh think of a minimal fedora in, uh, inst installation 
that would meet all the EU compliance uh, requirements. And then, but if you have a European distribution that already is there, like say SUSE, it's already in the EU. It would need to meet EU compliance. Why not just tweak that a little bit, and then you could even then say, "Look, we have our own distribution we're using, not based on another country's um, distribution." I mean, I understand they'd like to standardize it and have kind of a common base, but it seems like you could be further ahead by just, you know, you you create the SUSE Manjaro Ubuntu. EU I'll be edition. Honest, be and, honest, my personal opinion on why Robert went with uh, Fedora, he already knows it. There's there's one yeah. other thing. I, I'm doing a little bit of digging into the same question. Um, and they're actually using, it sounds like Fedora uh, Kyanite. And it's because they... The immutability. It's about the only immutable distro that has a stable release. Oh, okay. Yep. That that also checks all their other boxes. And I think by going with a stable release that checks all the other boxes, mm. it'll make it easier for them to uh, convince the European Commission to host them at code.europa.eu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still not entirely sure what I think about this project. Um, the there are some interesting ideas like take take a standardized base and install or, or, or then have like layers that you put on it you know so one layer for one country and one layer for another country and then you kind of descend down the the organizational tree you have you know different here's my americanism and, 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 coming out you have different states inside of that country and you have different layers for them for their needs like that's an interesting idea i suppose and those layers then would be the responsibility for managing them would fall at whoever does that, creates mm -hmm. that layer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. then Lee, you, uh, the uh, European Union itself would have very minimal coding to worry about. Probably, and probably be able to just go with a commercial entity or a subcontractor in Europe to provide the maintenance on it. Yeah, and, okay. And there's a lot of Linux that comes out of Europe. That's very true. A lot, yeah. of pro lot of projects, a lot of, you know, they're, Europe's yeah. heavily involved in it. And I bet Fedora's getting a lot of uh, that uh, European assistance I'm already. Sure. I'm sure. Lots of, lots of the developers are from Europe, all, from all over the place. But just want to let everybody know about this. Maybe <laughs> we should keep an eye on it. Uh, but check out the link. Be careful you don't go down the rabbit hole I went down and <laughs> reading about <laughs> the but with the EUOS website and then the uh, code.europa.eu website. Mm -hmm. Though you may find some interesting projects there that you may want to take advantage of. You just may. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>